Hey guys, how's it going? The name is Lasse Bolkenen, but you can call me LP for short. I have been invited by HTC to take an in-depth look and give you my take on the new HTC Desire. In this in-depth tour, we're going to be looking at the hardware and software, including a detailed look at the user experience and web browsing experience. We're also going to be taking a look at the device's camera and media playback features, so let's get to it. The very first thing you'll notice about the Desire is its gorgeous appearance. The HTC Desire has a big 3.7 inch screen that dominates the front of the device. It has a distinct resemblance to the Google Nexus 1, which can be considered as a twin device due to the Tsar. The only major difference is to the exterior being the mechanical buttons on the bottom and the optical trackball. On the bottom left corner of the device we find the home and menu buttons, and on the right we find the back and search buttons. On the top of the device we find the power button that also doubles as a lock switch for the screen. Also on top is a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the left hand side of the device we find the up and down volume rocker, and on the bottom of the device we find the micro USB port for charging and syncing up with your computer. The back of the device is an all black finish with a suede feeling Batman-esque rubber texture that really gives the phone a nice grip to it. On the top of the back we find the 5 megapixel autofocus camera and an LED flash. And beside it we find the speaker. The back cover is detached from the top, and under the cover we find a 1400 milliamp battery and taking out the battery gives you access to the SIM card and micro SD card. And the back cover snaps back like so. The Desire feels like a snug fit in the hand, it's not too big and you can reach every part of the screen without having the thumb dexterity of a professional thumb wrestler. The phone itself feels quite rigid, it doesn't crack or squeak when you squeeze it, and the Desire can definitely take a jab or two. But I still do not recommend putting the device in the back pocket of your skinny jeans and sitting on it, because it's never a good idea, I once had a pair of expensive Ray-Bans that suffered this ill fate. Anyways, the HTC Desire is a pretty lightweight device. It weighs in at 135 grams or 4.76 ounces. The device sports a capacitive touchscreen that enables it to have a glass outer layer that also adds to the rigidness of the device. The glass is coated with an anti-smudge surface, which doesn't mean you can't get fingerprints on it, but the fingerprints come off with relative ease. Just a quick wipe on your sleeve will suffice. But enough with the externals, let's power up the device. The HTC Desire sports a 1GHz Snapdragon processor, which is easily among the fastest mobile processors on the market today. Accompanying the Snapdragon processor is 576MB of RAM, which will suffice for your multitasking needs. I'll just enter my uncrackable pin code, and a few seconds and the device is up and running. So the HTC Desire like the Nexus 1 runs on Android 2.1. But a major difference is that Desire runs HTC's custom interface, Sense, on top of Android, that takes the user experience to an entirely new level. HTC Sense is definitely more approachable to casual users, but it's also more customizable and diverse for advanced users. And compared to the basic Android interface, the experience is much more stylized and definitely much more satisfying visually. Sense is divided up into seven fully customizable home screens that you can occupy to suit your liking and needs. On the default layout you'll find the clock on the top, and icons for the most commonly used operations on the bottom. Swiping to the left we find a very cool inbox widget that gives you quick access to your most recent emails. HTC Sense is also well in touch with social media, and the new Friendstream app combines Twitter, Facebook and Flickr feeds all into a single easily accessible stream. It's a very fast and convenient way of keeping tabs of your favorite social media. At the left end of the home screen grid you'll find the excellent HTC weather app that automatically updates current and upcoming weather info. It's a very cool widget with some pretty slick animations. And what is up with the weather here in Finland? Snow in April? You gotta be kidding me. When we swipe over to the right we find a widget for your favorite contacts. And you can add contacts from your SIM card or even Facebook. And swiping once more to the right we find a news widget where you can add an automatically updating news feed from your favorite websites. So this is basically the default layout, and you can easily get around by swiping between the screens, but you're probably thinking, do I really have to swipe through all the pages to get to the other edge? Well, no you don't. New to Sense is a feature called Leap. It allows you to pinch the screen and bring up all 7 home screens, and tapping on your preferred screen will take you directly where you want to go with good speed. Leaping around works extremely well, and definitely makes navigating Sense much faster. So you can stick with HEC's default layout, or you can customize basically everything you see on the screen. And customizing Sense couldn't be much easier. You can start with a clean slate or you can press and hold on a widget or icon, drag it down to remove it. And when you want to add content to the screen, just hit the plus icon. 
or you can just press and hold on an empty space on the screen and you're given a list of applications, widgets, and links to choose from. There's a nice selection of HTC made widgets, many of which come in various shapes and sizes. For example, you can have a full screen size calendar or a simpler version of the same application. And the same goes for pretty much every HTC custom widget. There's also a nice selection of applications to choose from that will appear as icons on the screen. You can arrange the icons, widgets, and folders anywhere on the seven screens, and you can also save your layout as a scene, which can be accessed by pressing the menu button. There are several default scenes for different types of use. You can basically have a layout for work at the office, and you can switch back to a more casual layout for when you get off work and head home. There's just immense customization possibilities on HTC Sense. You can basically make it your own. And a great thing about Sense is that it's evolving through every update. Wallpapers, of course, are among the options of customization. And a new addition to the Desire, familiar from the Nexus One, are animated wallpapers. They look pretty awesome and have some interactivity to them as well. It all looks gorgeous, much thanks to the 800 by 480 pixel high-res screen. And the big screen on the Desire is definitely impressive. Even the smallest of details are nice and sharp, and the brightness, colors, and contrast are vivid. That's the end of part one, so click on the annotation link to continue over to part two.